Morning guys, today we're going to have a little talk about buffalo. Uh, if you're from Australia, you'd know it as buffalo. Americans like to call it uh, St. Augustine grass. Uh, and if you want to get really technical, I'll have a go at this pronunciation of the botanical name. It's uh, Stenotaphrum secundatum. Uh, I think I've got that correctly pronounced. Uh, buffalo actually originated uh, in the West Indies and uh, it's thought to believe in America as well. And it was actually first introduced into Australia here back in the 1800s and it was introduced to Canal, New South Wales via Tower Point. Uh, it's actually been here in Australia longer than Kokiu because it was actually introduced uh, back in 1919 by the New South Wales uh, Department of Agricul Agriculture to the Royal Botanical Gardens here in Sydney. Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, there was no real improved varieties of buffalo uh, up until quite recent times, up until the late 90s. Uh, there was a few reports of uh, a few varieties like Floratine and uh, Bitter Blue around, but not really confirmed here in Australia. Um, but once again, once the, uh, the, the research and the efforts and the breeding started coming into the buffalo grasses, we started to see a few more varieties. Uh, you say, you say Walter, uh, King's Pride, uh, those sorts of things. This particular one here is Sapphire. Uh, so yeah, so that's sort of a little bit of a brief uh, history of buffalo. So up until the scientists and turf breeders actually really started to develop uh, what became the soft leaf varieties of buffalo, it wasn't really a, a, a sort of a grass that you'd want to spend a lot of time on. Uh, the traditional, uh, I guess, non-soft leaf or standard, some people call it Sydney buffalo, uh, even just laying on it like this would end up, uh, you'd you'd cover in welts, itches, scratches, and that's basically because, un, probably more so under a microscope, but the sides of these blades are actually quite serrated, and that was one of the characteristics that has been bred out of the new buffaloes, the new soft leaf varieties. Um, so you can actually enjoy them. You can roll around on them. The kids can play on them. Dogs can play on them. Uh, just enjoy the, the softer feel. Um, it's, it's quite nice to be on. It's quite nice to sit on um, without coming away scratchy, itchy, welty. So back in 2014, when I was actually searching um, for a buffalo for this particular area, uh, I quickly settled on the sapphire variety. Uh, I looked at a few other ones as well, and the reasons I ended up with the sapphire uh, is actually some winter colour. Now, some buffaloes can actually go quite purple or purple tinge in the winter time, especially once the frost arrives. Now, we're probably a little fortunate here, uh, exactly where I am, we, we might only see a dozen light frosts a year. Uh, our winter minimum temperatures might be zero with the occasional minus. I think the worst we had was one day at minus three or minus four, but traditionally we might go a, a degree or two below zero, but that's generally it at about 10 to 12 frosts a year. Uh, so winter color was was consideration. The other one was the, the warm weather tolerance here in Scone. We get quite warm, we can get, well this summer just gone, we had a few weeks, we had a couple of weeks of really hot weather, over 40 degrees, 45, a couple of 46s. Uh, and look, this grass handled that without any concern whatsoever. The big one also for me was uh, shade, shade tolerance. And like all buffalo grasses, sapphire can handle extremely shady growing conditions. And it's, uh, it'll still look fantastic. In fact, as, as far as shade loving lawns go, uh, I can only think of one that's probably more shade tolerant and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's harder to find. Uh, Durban grass is uh, also known as sweet smother grass. It, it'll handle a lot more shade, but it won't handle the wear. So as far as a combination of share versus shade versus wear, uh, the buffalo will win hands down. Uh, now look, it will handle uh, up to 70% shade in low wear areas and in higher wear areas, 50% shade. Um, it, it does actually recover really, really well from damage um, and wear it is very aggressive and it grows very fast um, and it also benefits from having a deep deep root system um, now texture and thatch it also it, it's a very it doesn't thatch up like i would have expected it to uh, compared to other buffalo lawns uh, it's often referred to as uh, the finer leaf it uh, and i'll try and find uh, an example of that in a minute but the reason they get it, they call it a final leaf is because the leaf actually sort of folds over, it sort of folds in half, um, which makes it also look and feel 
a lot finer. Uh, now, obviously, we're talking about fineness for a buffalo variety, not a cooch. Obviously, cooch is far, far finer than than this buffalo and 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 that kind of thing. But as far as buffaloes go, I would I, I think it's actually the finest leaf buffalo on the market, uh, and that was that was quite important to me. Another positive of this stuff is it's non-invasive. Um, as it's a stoloniferous grass, it has, it has no rhizome, so it has nothing nothing in the way of running under the soil. It has roots under the soil, obviously. It has no runners. Everything happens happens on the surface. So if it does get into a garden bed, it is just a matter of keeping it trimmed with the whippersnipper or your edger or whatever you're going to use, uh, and you're not going to have the concern of it getting in and taking over a garden and, and sending up random random shoots here and there like you can get with the cooch or the kikuyu lawns for example uh, you won't you won't get that because as i said it is only spreading by stolons not rhizomes so perfect for the home yard the more lower maintenance yard definitely um is it, buffalo is probably something that should be on your shopping list we have uh, positives and we have negatives so let's just touch on five negatives really quickly uh and one of the negatives i can think of right now are these flies and they've come back to bite me uh so although look, although buffalo uh, generally forms quite a dense, thick mat, um, you can get some weeds. They can creep in, not to the same degree as other things. But one of the things to be aware of with buffalo, you are somewhat limited as to what you can actually do once weeds arrive. So if you get your broadleaf weeds or your bindies or things like that in there, uh, MCPA or bromoxanol will take care of those. However, if you happen to be uh, next to your next door neighbour, for example, has an invasive lawn, a cooch, a kikuyu lawn, uh, and it creeps into your buffalo and you don't catch it in time, you, as far as I'm aware, you're going to be stuck with it. There's no registered chemicals off the top of my head that I can think of that are going to be able to treat cooch or kikuyu in a buffalo lawn. And that also goes for when you're laying a buffalo lawn from scratch. You want to be 100% sure that you have killed every bit of, every skerrick, every bit of competing grasses uh, because once this stuff's down um, you don't you don't really want to have to fight other grasses out of it all the time uh, when I first laid this I had a little tiny patch of kikuyu that popped up I managed to see it get on it in time and I literally dug it out with a fork uh, and it hasn't come back it's I, I got it and that was the end of that um, no short mowing look buffalo does perform best when it's mown a bit taller so the recommendations for this particularly the sapphire was 35 to 45 millimeters in full sun and between 50 and 60 millimeters uh, in the shade now i actually mow mine between 70 and 80 which is on the upper side again uh, i'll touch on why that is a little later on um, but it's had to do with a little bit of trial and error so for me i like uh, i like that i like a little bit longer and there's also some maintenance things alongside of that which for me i feel uh the longer height of cut is 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 good um now drought tolerance you'll see a lot of these buffalo breeders banging on about its drought tolerant and to a, look that's not incorrect and my personal opinion is that it is certainly not anywhere near as drought tolerant as a cooch or kikuyu lawn and the reasons are very simple again because we have nothing underneath the surface apart from roots so we have no rhizomes uh, once this stuff dries out, once the runners have got nothing left in them, this grass is gone. It hangs its hat up. It says, I've had enough. I'm out of here. Thanks for your time. Goodbye. Uh, whereas obviously a cooch lawn can, you can end up with a dirt, a dirt paddock, a dirt backyard. You get some rain on it and it'll shoot back through because it's been surviving under the ground. It's not the case with the buffalo. Uh, it's by no means water hungry, but it is not... It's not the most drought tolerant of the warm season grasses. Some people will tell you, oh, it's more drought tolerant than cooch. It's more drought tolerant than kikuyu. It's garbage. In my opinion, it's absolutely garbage. Uh, that is that is just simply not the case. Uh, so look, uh, this this doesn't get a huge amount. I don't, I don't flood any of my yard with water. Uh, I water to its requirements. Um, but yeah, be aware it's not as drought tolerant as what some people will have you believe but by no means is it water thirsty. So it's just not as tolerant as some things. Okay, as far as care and maintenance goes, and we'll touch on renovation quickly too. Uh, it, look, it's gonna require pretty much a weekly mow, a couple of times a week in the middle of summer, a bit less in winter time. However, uh, once a year, it's really gonna benefit from 
a, a low mow, a scalp. Now, it's not the sort of scalp that you'd do on a cooch lawn or a cocu lawn. Uh, it's far less in, it's far less ingress, aggressive than that. Uh, with this one here, uh, I actually only cut this down to about 20 to 25 mils, so just an inch or a bit less. Uh, and it does, and that's coming out of winter, so that's coming early, early to mid, probably mid spring. Um, it does actually sulk a little bit, uh, so you'll, you'll you'll give it a little haircut, and it it sort of it's, it's a bit of a sleeping bear. It, it's not the first one out of bed in the morning. It, it sort of likes a bit of a sleep in. Um, so by giving it that that sort of spring haircut take i take mine down to about that height it sulks it carries on it comes good i mean well the results are here um and the other thing is only really gets fed two to three times a year now i have not fed this lawn and you can see it here behind me this lawn has not been fed since spring uh normally i sometimes get a feed around christmas time but with the drought i didn't i held off uh i didn't want to have to give it any extra water i just wanted to be a bit respectful to uh our water and the, the fact that we didn't have a great deal to us so i just thought i need to do my bit play my part and not push unnecessary growth and nor is it suffering so normally you know in better times i would have fed it at christmas uh but i will give it a feed next month in april uh sending it into winter that'll help uh, help its vigor, help its color to maintain. So yeah, what, two to three times a year you're feeding it, once a year you're gonna shave it short uh, and be prepared for it to sulk for a little while before it starts to recover. But it, it look, it does. Uh, another thing to remember, this is nothing, this, this is a home lawn. It, it's not a lawn, it's not a turf variety that you're gonna find used in any stadium or in any sports field. It's just not suitable for that sort of application. Buffalo is nothing more than homes, and gardens and to a lesser extent the parks and that sort of a thing um look in a nutshell do i rate buffalo look i do it has its place uh and for me i needed a lawn that could handle a shady side of my home as the winter time stretches on more of this lawn behind me here will become shaded for the entire winter period so for me cooch was out of the equation uh if i didn't have to have buffalo here if I had the choice of using any lawn, would it be here? No, it would not. It's not my favorite lawn. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not for me. I find it a little bit limiting. I prefer my lawns to be shorter and finer leafed, but I also understand that if, if the situation calls for a particular grass, then that's the grass for the area. It's gonna give me the best result. It's gonna look the best, and I'm not gonna to have to fuss over it with high maintenance procedures just to even get it to grow. So look, in a nutshell, um, do some research, call into your local turf farm, have a look at the varieties there. They're all there. Uh, they've got text, test plots. I don't know of too many turf farms that don't have a test plot. And if they don't, I'm sure if you ask them, they'll be more than happy to take you out to their growing patch of buffaloes or whatever grass you're gonna look at and uh, see for yourself. Touch it, feel it, roll on it, take the kids and make an informed decision on your new lawn because it, it's an investment. It's gonna add value to your home and you wanna make sure you've picked the right grass for the occasion. Now, what I'll do now is I'll grab that camera and we'll have a closer look at this lawn. And then I'm gonna actually take you around to a mate's place who also has a buffalo lawn uh, and just point out some differences and why, and explain and demonstrate and show why I actually cut this higher uh, and, and, and what that actually means for this lawn. Okay, so why do I cut my lawn longer than, well, I guess what the, uh, the average, average Joe, average punter does? And why, what have I decided, what, what benefits have I, discovered by doing that for me number one is it makes this grass stand up it, it, it's more happy to actually grow upwards than actually run across the ground and we can see that by uh, when we start digging in down into it it's nice and soft nice and lush it doesn't have any of that sort of spongy uh, spongy sort of feeling um, and scalping tendencies that you'll get when you cut this shorter um, now you can see we can go straight down to the soil profile here and we don't actually have any runners crossing over each other it's just standing up nicely and it's not going to get that spongy horrible feeling that some buffaloes suffer from now uh, as I said we'll, we'll, we'll hop in the car and we'll wander we'll, we'll take a quick trip around the corner there to a mate's place who has that problem um, they're not really lawn people and it's just buffalo that they just mow 
uh, and they're trying to mow it short and the shorter they mow it the more dramas that, that I believe it's going to give them and I'll actually show you that very shortly. Before we actually do that I just thought I'd give you a look at this lawn uh, in its entirety. Now you can th this uh, this shade line here during the depths of winter will actually come right out to that circular uh, garden where that, that stand, uh, the weeping tree is, the weeping cherry. So half this lawn will be in full shade uh, in the coming months. Uh, now that's an, just absolutely not gonna, not gonna grow anything other than buffalo. So we'll have a little look here. Remember, has not been fed at all since spring. And look, uh, I really don't, think you can argue that it, it needs one but it'll get one next month anyway let's have a look at this other lawn we'll get up close and personal to it and we'll have a and, and, and I'll point out what I'm talking about when it comes to mowing shorter and uh, when stolons actually uh, start stacking on top of each other and what that does okay so here's your typical buffalo yard looks nice and tight looks nice and short uh, but when you get up close to it you start to see things aren't as they would appear um, and this is a really great example um, you can see by doing that I'm actually moving all this whole area uh, because they're trying to get it nice and short but it's not working and when you start digging down what you start to see is runners overlaying overlaying each other and really that's all dead. So when it comes time to scalping this, I'd be really cautious about how I went about it, simply because if you scalp this the wrong way, you're not gonna have any lawn left. This is, yeah, this this lawn is really spongy. Um, and see here, um, it's running on top of itself. And you didn't see any of that when you cut it that little bit higher. And you look over here and you get dead patches and you dig down and it's just runners on top of each other on top of each other we've even got so here we go here's an example that we've got cooch in it here um it's, it's there for good you're not going to get rid of that now um so as i said annual annual shaving down to that for me it's down to an inch um this lawn is a this, this lawn here is a pig to mow you push the mower down into it, it scalps, it's, yeah. So probably next season, um, I'm gonna actually hook into this. I'm gonna see if I can scalp it down and, and resurrect it and make it a much nicer, pleasant place to be. Um, but at the moment, it's just not. Um, that's why I don't like buffalo, especially when it's not cut a bit longer. You'd probably, I, I'm gonna think that you probably get the similar result of this by using a cylinder mower. So you can cylinder mow this stuff um, but you're just encouraging this sort of behaviour, uh, I believe. So, you know, be, be, be aware of that. Uh, another thing we'll point out here, look, here's the seed heads. Some people get a little bit confused as to what's going on when they first see these pop up in their buffalo lawn. Uh, so this is basically a seed head. Uh, it, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's probably suggesting to me at the moment that this lawn is probably ready for a bit of a drink, ready for a little bit of a feed. Um, but also they tend, they can tend to put on some seed head after periods of rain. And we have just come out of a period of quite some, quite a fair bit of rain. Um, so yeah, that's the seed head. It's an unusual looking thing. It can, it can, uh, confuse some people, uh, if they haven't come across it before, but it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just the plant doing its thing. Okay. So we'll wrap the video up there. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Look, there was a lot in that. Um, a lot of detailed information it's, it's it's kind of very hard to i guess give an opinion on 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 turf any turf uh because basically you're just hearing me waffle on uh get down to your turf farm have a look at it for yourself if it interests you uh touch it feel it roll on it for yourself um next week we'll go back to the green we'll have a look at uh how it's coming coming on after the renovation I can tell you now it's actually coming on really well. So we'll touch on it next week. Uh, so we'll, we'll visit that again. Uh, we'll have a look at the glyphosate challenge that we're gonna do out the front yard. Uh, see, we'll start that one soon. So I've got a fair few things coming up uh, in the weeks. But anyway, guys, look, 
have a good evening, have a good day, have a good morning, wherever you're watching from, and we'll see you next time here on the Aussie Lawn.